Grace and peace to you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I am glad that I can be with you, that we can, can be in connection in this virtual fashion. Will you pray with me? Source of love and life, your glory knows no bounds. We, we yearn to set aside our fears, but we are often afraid. We long to love our sisters and our brothers, but we often feel alienated from them. We desire to abide in you as you abide in us, but we can't seem to figure out how. Show us once more how to love, for only love can cast out our fear. Show us how to love one another well, for only then can we truly know you. Show us how to abide in your vine, for only then and we bear the fruit that glorifies your name. Amen. The scripture lessons that I'm going to share with you for this fifth Sunday of Easter come to us from the letter that we call 1 John, 4th chapter, verses 7 through 21. And our gospel lesson today comes to us from the gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Hear now the word of our Lord. From 1 John, as the evangelist writing to the people of God says, Dear friends, let's love each other, because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God, because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only Son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. This is how we know we remain in him and he remains in us because he has given us a measure of his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If any of us confess that Jesus is God's Son, God remains in us, and we remain in God. We have known and have believed the love God, that God has for us. God is love, and those who remain in love remain in God, and God remains in them. This is how love has been perfected in us so that we can have confidence on the judgment day because we are exactly the same as God is in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear expects punishment. The person who is afraid has not been made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates a brother or sister, he is a liar because the person who doesn't love a brother or sister who can be seen can't love God who can't be seen. This commandment we have from him, those who claim to love God ought to love their brother and sister also. I invite you to hear the good news now. From the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse, as Jesus speaking to the people of God says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. 
my Father is glorified when you produce much fruit and in this way prove that you are my disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock our Redeemer. Amen. You know, it, it, it happened at our house, well, just the other day. My wife, Cindy, was in the living room, and she's going to turn on the TV so that she could watch it, but nothing happened. You know, push the button on the remote. Bummer. Nothing happened. You know, kind of wanted to watch TV. So we started looking, you know, for what could be possibly causing the problem. So first, you know, Cindy started doing some troubleshooting. She checked to see if the battery connections on the remote were, con were corroded, which, of course, would interrupt its electrical connection. But that didn't seem to be the problem. So then we thought, well, maybe the batteries are dead. So we changed the batteries in the remote. But that wasn't the problem either. We looked at our cable box. That wasn't the problem. And it was then that we started checking the wires on the back of the TV, and we did finally discovered that some of them had somehow loosened just enough that the electrical connection had been lost. So the TV couldn't get what it needed. It just couldn't function. But once the wires were back in place and the connection had been reestablished and the TV could get what it needed, the TV worked like a champ. Gotta love it when that happens. And I bring this up for a reason. For the most part, we, we understand the need for connections. I mean, that's why we've got extension cords, you know, to get the power to our electric gizmos so they can function, right? Connection's important. That's why we clean the battery terminals on our cars and in the equipment that we use on the farm. Because if corrosion is built up to the extent that there's no electrical connection, well, the cars, the equipment, the trucks, they won't start or work as they should. Connection's important. You know, vast amounts of money have been spent over recent years in the construction of, of numerous cell phone towers so that we can better stay in connection to the rest of the world through our cell phones. We don't always appreciate that effort, at least until we find that we need to use our phones and discover that we are, yep, we found one of those dead spots where our phones can't connect with the tower. Then we're not so happy because, well, our life isn't at all that isn't all that we want it for it to be at that particular time. Connection matters. You know, I've come to realize that when I get to the northern end of, of my Sunday morning circuit and I get out there by the town of Rolla, I'm approaching the limit to which my pickup radio can connect with a radio station that I normally listen to. The signal is, is weak at that point, static gets stronger, and my listening experience is not all that I want for it to be. And I know that what I have said so far is, is really no surprise for, to you because all of us know the value of connection. We get it. We understand it. At least we do when it comes to, you know, electric gizmos and cell phones and so on. But what we sometimes lose sight of in our day-to-day our -day lives is the importance, the vital importance of our remaining in connection with God and with all of our neighbors. Whenever those connections become degraded or broken, our quality of life, as well as the quality of life for our neighbors, becomes so much less than what we want for it to be. Connection is important. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus reminds us of an important truth that sometimes slips from our conscious thought in, in the midst of all of the busyness of our day-to-day -day lives. Jesus tells us, remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. Jesus 
is reminding us that we need him in our lives in order for our lives to be all that Jesus and you and I want for them to be. Whenever we try to, to go it alone and we just operate solely on the basis of, basis of our own notions and physical and mental abilities, we will not produce the fruit that Jesus desires for us to produce. You know, we don't much care to admit it, but the truth is that we, you and I, all of us, are finite and fragile beings who are already severely compromised, even broken, by the innate sinful nature of humankind. There is that deeply ingrained part of us that really does want for everything to be all about the way that we want for it to be, and we can and frequently do place our own desires at a much higher priority than obeying what our God has commanded us to do and who he commands us to be. Let's face it, folks, we get in our own way. And when our self-centered hearts lead us into sin, we are the ones who get hurt right along with our neighbors as well as our relationship with our righteous God. If we are to be all that we can be and all that we are meant to be, we need to be in connection with our God. We need to be in connection with God. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we're doing part of what we need to do to be in connection right now by, by, by gathering to worship, even in this virtual fashion. And that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. But you know, it's just a tiny fraction of our time. What about the rest of the time? How do we stay in connection then in those times? Well, there's, there's also prayer, which is a good way to be in connection with God. So I encourage you to do that. Pray as often as you can. But don't stop there. Don't stop there because there is another vitally important way for us to stay in connection with our God that is being increasingly overlooked in our modern day contentious polarized society. And John shows us the way in his letter that we read from moments ago. Do you remember what he told us? He says, no one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. And he reminds us that God is love. Those who remain in love remain in God and God remains in them. This is really good news. It really is. God doesn't require that we, we master some incredibly difficult tasks in order to draw near to him. God simply and wonderfully calls for us to do what we have always been meant to do. And that is to simply love the people around us in the very same way that we want to be loved ourselves, which is really easily doable since we already know how we want to be treated ourselves. We know this stuff. We also know how good it feels when other people love us just as we are, without harshly judging us for our faults or, or demanding that we change who we are in order to become acceptable to them. When you are loved just as you are, however you are, you feel better and your life becomes better. Think about how this reality fits in with God's plan for his plans for his creation. When, when John tells us if we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us, God is reminding us that the love of God only becomes all that God means for it to be when we share it with those who are around us. So we, you and I, have a part to play in God's greater scheme of things, and we can readily do that because loving others is what we're built for. It is. I'm not making this stuff up. It says so right here in this handy-dandy little book that we call our Bible. In the very first book in our Bible, the letter, or the book that we call Genesis, 
It says right here, God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them male and female. God created them. And in that letter that we call 1 John that we read from moments ago, we're reminded that God is love. It says so right there. You know what that means? We're created in the image of God who is love. So therefore, we are meant to be loving people. It's always been God's plan for us to be loving people. Again, it says so here in the letter that we call in the letter to the Ephesians, second chapter, verse 10, we're reminded that we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. God, who created us in his image, deliberately did so to facilitate our ability to love one another, to, to do those good works, which will then provide a better quality of life for everybody. See, that's God's plan for us. That's God's plan for you. So go and just do that. Do it. Love the people with whom you share this planet. We can do this, you and I. We can Loving others in the same way that you want to be loved yourself can be as simple as just listening to your neighbors without arguing over every little thing. Allow your neighbors to have their own opinion while you continue to value yours. Be that neighbor who is reluctant to judge, but who is eager to help others just as they are, however they are. I could go on and on, but the possibilities that exist to share God's love are endless. And they are wonderful. So draw near to our Lord and Savior. Stay in connection with him through worship and prayer, as well as through those ongoing good works of loving kindness that you give to the people around you so that you may bear the fruit that will enhance your life, that will improve the lives of your neighbors, and will glorify the name of the one we follow. Be in connection. Praise be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Loving God, you... You are the vine from which we draw the nourishment that we need in order to be all that you want for us to be. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Remind us of all that you can and will give to us. Remind us of all that we have to offer to the world around us. Help us to overcome our fears and our self-centered inclinations so that we may love others just like you love us, without condition and without stopping. Help us to bear fruit for your kingdom on this earth and bring glory to your name. We come to you today, Lord, praying for the health and well-being, not just of ourselves, but for our neighbors, all of our neighbors. We pray for all who are suffering from illness or injury or who are mourning the loss of loved ones who, or who are suffering any other difficulties in their lives. We pray that you would speed healing, comfort, strength, and hope to all who are in need. We pray that you would speak to our hearts and our minds on this day, that you would remind each of us of the ease with which we may share your transformative love with the world around us and give us the wisdom and the desire to be the fruitful comforts that you have created and call us to be. And all of this we bring to you today in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to end this, this virtual time of worship together so that we may go forth into our world to draw nearer to God by drawing near to one another in love, let's pray about that in the prayer for going forth that we end our worship sessions with. Creator, Redeemer, God, be with me as I go out into the world. Open my eyes and my heart to the opportunities that you provide for me to serve you and to love my neighbors. Daily give me the wisdom and courage that I need to be an effective servant. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord raise up his countenance upon you and give you 